welcome back. And we're getting ready to move into our first segment for today as we find out more about the Lee's Humane Society. Joining me this morning, we have Chairperson Deborah Lewis and we have Secretary Deandra Peralta. Good morning and welcome and thank you for being here. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us. So let's start off the conversation by finding out a bit of the history of the Humane Society. Uh, how long it has been in formation and what What's the work that it does? Okay. Well, the Belize Humane Society was formed in 1997, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it's the oldest humane society in Belize. There's actually nine humane societies in different parts of the country now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like many organizations, it's had its stronger times and its times where there was more difficulty. Um, they went through a period um, of about four or five years, some time ago, where the, the board that had been in place for quite some years, mm -hmm. um, sort of dissolved. Um, the sort of main mover and shaker left the country and it, there really wasn't a properly functioning organization. There was one woman who was a volunteer and she tried to keep things going as best she could. Mm -hmm. But a couple of years ago, not surprisingly, she sort of burnt out and realized she had to move on to yeah. something else. So that's when a group of us came together um, and said, Look, we really need to get the Humane Society reformed and with a proper board and so yeah. on. So that was just about two years ago now. And so we um, had the first AGM in some years in, the, in November of 2015, I guess it was. And so now we're all sort of back on track, sort of having a proper transparency and all of those things that you need for a good organization. Now, what are the uh, main objectives of the society? Uh, we don't speak very often in this country about animal rights. And I right. know uh, oftentimes when people think about the uh, Humane Society, they think primarily of dogs, right. but that's not the full scope of your work, right? No. Do you want yeah. me to take that one? Oh, you go ahead. Okay. I've, I'm, I'm, Deandra's relatively new to the board, so mm -hmm. some of the historical part that she's uh, less, a little bit less familiar with. Yeah. Um, no, we do, we're, we're concerned with all animals, but our focus is mainly dogs and cats sort of what, what we call companion animals or, or pets. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we work, first of all, we, we, there's sort of two thrusts I think we have. One is animal welfare and animal rights, that, that animals deserve proper care and treatment. Mm -hmm. And we also realized to, to get there, we also have to promote responsible pet ownership. Because, you know, we, Owners have a responsibility to the animals. They also have the responsibility to the community. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've all lived in situations in Belize where there's the barking dogs all night mm -hmm. or where there, there's the owners who just let their animals loose, mm -hmm. uh, particularly their dogs loose to sort of roam the streets. And, you know, one of the things I was pointing out last week when I was meeting with the mayor is that a lot of the nuisance animals in Belize are not strays. Yeah. Some of them are. Yeah. But a lot of them are animals that owners simply are letting them onto the street and aren't taking proper care of them. Yeah. So that's, been a, that's going to be a big thrust of our work for this year is, is really getting to understand that you might have a right to have an animal, but rights always carry responsibilities with them. Yeah. And you have a responsibility not only to that animal, but to the community as well. Now here's a little unknown fact that I think not all our viewers are aware of. We do have laws to protect uh, animals in this country. Yes. Tell us more about that. There's, there's two, two basic um, laws or two mm -hmm. basic documents that outline the laws when it comes to animals. One is the Cruelty to Animals Act and the other is the Dogs Act that is specifically about dogs. And they do prohibit things like um, failing to give your animal proper food and water. And in fact, if you are not giving your animal proper food and water, I can go onto your property to do that, to give the animal food or water and you cannot tra charge me with trespassing because wow. it's your responsibility and if you're not fulfilling that responsibility, I'm, I'm permitted to do that. Yeah. Um, it also talks about things like you're not allowed to beat your animal, you're not allowed to torture an animal or ill-treat an animal. That's also against the law. So those kinds of things I think are not very well known by people in Belize. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had people report to us that you know, they've had a neighbor who was beating their dog and they've said, well, you know, stop. And the person says, oh, it's my dog, I can do what I want. Well, actually you can't. 
So you can call the police and make a report. Yes, but in order to have a report um, actually followed up on, you actually have to go in and sign a complaint. Okay. And that's something that also people don't um, always realize. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the police do get a lot of reports of a lot of things and they have a lot of calls on their time. Mm -hmm. So for animal cruelty cases, they're probably only going to be followed up on if you actually go in and, and make a formal complaint. Yeah. Now, the laws, as you pointed out, uh, have existed for some time, but they're not as stringent, perhaps, as uh, it needs to be in this day and age. You know, in, particularly in the area of penalties. Yeah. Um, most of the offenses carry a maximum penalty of $100. Some of them are even less. There's even one offense that's $10. And it's because these laws are 50, 60, 70 years old. Yeah. And so uh, one of the things we want to do in the coming year is to do a review of the legislation and look at not only the, the offenses themselves, but also the penalties involved and, and try to do some pushing to, to bring them up to date. Really. Yeah. Now, while some people are, are natural uh, uh, animal lovers and can understand the concept of animal having rights, not everyone buys into it. Um, and oftentimes you're, you're facing the argument uh, of people saying, they're just dogs, they're just cats, they're just animals, you know? So how do you educate people on the importance of animal rights and why proper uh, pet ownership is not just something that you should want to do, it's something that you should do. Right. Want to start that one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, in educating people, I think it's a big culture thing. Yeah. We have that problem thinking that, especially in Belize right now, just thinking that we don't really see yeah. that for ourselves. So I think education starts with kids. Mm -hmm. We have to start with educating kids because sometimes we get we get calls that oh a child a child is stoning a cat mm -hmm. or stoning a dog but that comes from their parents so if it's a cultural aspect we need to start where it starts and that's exactly with the children. Yeah. So what we try to do and what we've actually been starting to do we have a club at, that the girls at SA is starting that we want to do kids programs this summer to try to bring that forth because we see that as a problem because the parents some parents aren't teaching the kids that you know animals are animals have rights animals are you know beings that are right there and they have emotions and everything just like everyone else and kids naturally want to love an animal it's it's an adult that will go and tell them otherwise that is so true and not only that uh there are links to certain behaviors yeah. Um, when children abuse animals that are major warning signs. That's right. Well, and there's lots of evidence that shows that, that children who, lose, who <coughs> learn, learn to be cruel to animals as children mm -hmm. tr you know, transfer that behavior to how they treat people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that there's lots, there is evidence, um, not so much from Belize because we don't tend to have that kind of research, but from other countries that shows you know, people who get in trouble for the, with the law, for example, for violent offenses, mm -hmm against people are more likely, I think it's five times more likely, to have been, you know, seen some signs of animal cruelty as children. Yeah. So it's not just about the animals, it's also about people too. Yeah, the psychology behind it, yeah. yeah. That's right. And we know uh, in certain instances where dogs are used as, as even uh, treatment after yeah. major crisis. Uh, right. what, what are therapy dogs, yeah. thank you. Uh, because simply interacting with a dog can change how you feel. Right. Well. And in some places, for example, they're using dogs um, as, as to accompany um, sexual assault victims mm -hmm. in court. Mm -hmm. So the dog is with the, the victim in court as he or she is testifying. Yeah. So that, that just provides that support and that comfort. Makes a big difference. Now, how do you get a society like Belize to make this paradigm shift? Uh, do you go the punitive route in terms of pushing for stronger penalties and perhaps a buy-in from the municipality, uh, Belize City for example, uh, or do you go the education route and keep on informing them of why it's important? I think it's both. I think it's always kind of you know, the carrot and the stick as it yeah. were. Um, because I think we do have to use the law, especially for the more extreme cases. Mm -hmm. um, where people are really, because it's not only that they're hurting that particular animal, they're also teaching the people around them, including the children, that that's okay and that's acceptable. Mm -hmm. So I think we do have to use the law when 
we see those, those really serious cases. But at the same time, that's just a, a short term kind of putting a band-aid on that particular problem. So we really do have to, to do the education route, which it takes a long time. It's not going to be an overnight thing. Yeah. But, you know, as Deandra was saying, working with kids, working with young people, um, and, also, and also doing things like this work to get the message out to adults as well. Now, why did you choose to get involved with it, Deandra? Tell me. Well, I'm an animal lover, of mm -hmm. course, uh, but I've seen, like, I've seen so many things happening around, and I always wanted to do something. I always wanted to foster, I always wanted to help. So I started off by fostering, and I think my first foster was a dog, and I failed, and I adopted her. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, I fostered cats, and I haven't failed there yet, but I'm sure it's gonna come. But that's what I got into it, because I saw the need for it. I saw so many animals out there hurting, and I wanted to do more. Mm -hmm. I, I figured if I don't do it, I can't just keep saying, oh, poor dog, yeah. I wish I could do something, I needed to do something. Now that is a, a service that the Humane Society offers, right? Tell us about your, your list of services. Well, we, we work in, in basically three areas. Mm -hmm. The first is the animal welfare area, and <coughs> that includes the direct services to animals. So okay. that includes things like um, our spay and neuter program mm -hmm. to encourage spay and, neutering, spay and neutering of animals, mm -hmm. to provide opportunities for people who perhaps can't afford it mm -hmm. to have their animals spayed or neutered. So that's the first part. The second is responding to calls from the public about animals who are injured, abused, neglected. That's the most challenging part of our work because we're all volunteers. Mm -hmm. We don't have a shelter in Belize, um, or in Belize City at least. And so we're really dependent on how much support we get from the community in terms of having foster homes for yeah. animals. That's the biggest challenge. And that's, if any of your viewers is interested in becoming a foster home for, um, for a cat or dog or kittens or puppies, please get in touch with us. Because what, is it, what, 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 what are the responsibilities that come along with fostering an animal? Well, Manu, you talk about that because you're, yeah, you're our foster, foster expert. Well, <laughs> the biggest responsibility is always gonna be showing that animal love and care. A lot of our animals sometimes are neglected and abused and it takes a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. But some of them can be like kittens or not that badly off and they're not as scared of people. Mm -hmm. But you gotta feed them, you gotta give them love and care, sometimes walk them, play with them. You know, just like you would have your own dog, your own cat, treat them exactly like that because that's what they need. Yeah. And uh, you have a, a large number of people who foster animals in Belize? No. No, we don't. It's we very unfortunate. We don't. Handful of people. Yeah, we really. have. A, we probably could count them all on one hand, and myself included is a foster. So. And uh, what's the success in terms of getting the foster animals uh, to the point of adoption? Because that's that's the point of fostering, right? Yeah. Well, I don't think we've ever had an animal. We've come close because, mm -hmm. you know, if we don't have if we have an animal that we're trying to foster and we don't have a place for it. Ultimately, we would probably have to humanely euthanize the animal. We've never come to that because, especially people like Deandre says, we're not going to do that until we've, you know, gone every possible route to yeah. find to find a foster and find eventually find an adopter. Yeah. So really, um, except for the animals that are have been too sick or too injured, and we really did ha have to humanely euthanize them, um, we've actually been able to eventually find a home for every animal that we've had yeah. so far. You know, it's amazing to know that this work is taking place in Belize and a lot of people may not be fully aware uh, that you have been undergoing uh, these type of services. We see animals all the time, um, whether next to death because they look like they have mutant, um, and people don't know that they have somebody they can call, but right. you're also uh, obviously strained as, as volunteers. Right. So, how do you, at one point in time, the Humane Society had a shelter established. Yes. Uh, it was uh, on the George Price Highway. Yes. Yeah. Um, what is the status of that? And is that something that you would work towards uh, rebuilding? Well, we're definitely talking about um, the need to have a shelter in Belize City again. Mm -hmm. I think one of the problems with the last shelter was that um, people were able to you know, raise the resources to actually construct a shelter. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they looked forward enough to, to realize what it was going to take to keep that shelter going. Okay. And so we're hoping that sometime this year maybe we could put together some kind of working group mm -hmm. of people who are interested in helping us 
develop a shelter. Um, so, but we have to have a plan for the shelter and we have to have a plan for sustaining the shelter once we get it. Yeah. And probably actually, you know, build up the shelter over time, like start mm -hmm. small and, and move from there. Mm -hmm. uh, because it is a challenge. The, the biggest challenge is going to be, I think, keeping it going. Yeah. People are often willing to, to you know, donate money into sort of bricks and mortar, but not so necessarily much interested in giving staffing. the money for yeah. it for staffing it or whatever yeah. so it's, it's going to be a big undertaking and it will probably be a few years before we get to that point okay now uh, tell us about the other stuff that uh, Humane Society has been up to I know you have some work in the pipeline and uh, some other projects that you're about to get underway right well there's the regular the all the animal welfare work yeah we are looking at uh, we, have, we don't have the date firm yet but we're looking at sometime around the end of March possibly um, April 1st mm -hmm. doing a spay and neuter clinic in um, probably in Lake Eye okay. is where we're going to start um, and that would be a one-day clinic it would be free we encourage donations of course if for people who can afford it um, and so hopefully people who maybe can't afford in terms of having their dogs or and cats spayed or neutered would take that opportunity so yeah. and we'll certainly pass on information to you once we have the the location and so on yeah. um, so that's certainly one of the things we have coming up um, you know I think Deandra mentioned we look we have a new club at St. Catharines yeah. and who are very enthusiastic and um, their first their first project uh, they've been going for about a month now was um, doing a table at Brody's you know selling our t-shirts and so okay. on um, so to sort of raise some money for their own club and to raise money for the animals too. Yeah. And I was laughing because I, I was kind of concerned. I thought, oh, I really hope their first, their first project goes well. Yeah. Because we've done tables at Brody's before and we do sell some things, but it's not, you know, yeah. it's not always easy. They did about, they did so much better than we had ever done. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, we should just it's turn all, useful, oh, yeah, enthusiasm. Yeah, so <laughs> we should just turn all our, our sales over to them. So that, that club is, is, you know, sort of exciting that we're getting that going. We're looking in, as part of the education program, we're looking at um, doing a summer day camp for kids focused on developing kindness to animals mm -hmm. and, and as a result, also respect for each other. So tying those two things together. So that's another thing that we're working on. We'll be at the street art festival that yeah. uh, we're doing, and also they are doing some like a kid's corner with, um, you know, coloring and activities face for kids, paint. face yeah. painting mm -hmm. that are all animal oriented, giving us a chance to talk to the children about about animals and kindness to animals yeah. and so on. So those are a few things we have coming up in the near future and not so near future in a now few the cases. Sp the spay and neutering, and we're going to get over to some of our featured guests in just a few because they're <laughs> getting antsy, but um, the spay and neutering clinic is so important and uh, I, I, I don't know uh, how often Last year, there was the uh, spay and neutering clinic, I believe it was like in the summer. Yes, in June. And there were a large number of people who finally understood how important it was to take their animals in and get them spay and neutered. Right. Let's talk about the importance of doing this. Well, spay and neutering is, is really important for a number of different reasons. Mm -hmm. One is that we have a big unwanted pet or animal population in yeah. Belize. You know, there's, we see dogs on the street, we see cats who are you know, on the street or sick or whatever. And really the only way to have a long-term strategy to deal with that is, um, is by having more people spay and neuter their animals. Even if your animal is an animal that usually stays in your yard, all it has to do is get out once. And you know, and it's going to contribute either by either by finding a, a lady cat that or a lady dog that they're interested in, or by getting <laughs> pregnant themselves. So, um, but the other thing I think people don't realize is that animals who are spayed and neutered are healthier. Yeah. yeah. There's a whole range of diseases, including things like TVT, which is a venereal STDs. cancer. STDs. The animals get STDs. All kinds of things. Yeah. That your animal is going to be healthier, and it's, it's actually going to save you money in the long run. An animal will actually live longer. Yeah. It's funny because people don't realize that spaying and neutering your animal early is actually best for her. I actually met people who said, oh, but I believe you have to give them their first rut or they're going to go crazy. I'm like, that's actually not true. If you give them... They're, you spay them and you neuter them before they're six months old, they'll live longer, mm. they'll be healthier, and they'll ultimately be stronger. And uh, neutering a dog also uh, reduces the aggression yeah. as well. It, it can re reduce aggression, but it does not prevent the dog from being a good watchdog. Okay. That's a lot, a lot of people yeah. think that 
you have to leave your dog intact, as they say, um, because otherwise he won't protect your house. There's no indication at all that a dog is any more protect, uh, any less protective okay. after they've been neutered. So, so please, everybody, if you if that's what you've thought, because <laughs> it's a very common, you know, yeah. common assumption people make. Yeah, um, it's really not true. Yeah. And it helps with wandering dogs as well. Yes, like you're the right, ones you're who right. fight to get out. That's right. You're right. Your dogs won't um, won't wander as much. Mm -hmm. They won't. Um, they won't. They, they're not. They're not likely to bark as much. They're less likely to bite. I mean, it's just a whole range of things that yeah. uh, behaviorally that you'll have. You'll have a nicer dog or a nicer cat. All right. So we're going to move on to some of our featured guests, and then we'll talk a bit more about your fostering program at Great. this point in time. So, uh, of course. As we pointed out, the Humane Society does offer a service of uh, fostering animals, dogs and cats. And uh, we have two foster animals with us at this time. So we're going to be introduced to Cupid and Sweet Pea. And Sweet Pea has been entertaining everyone in the background. <laughs> so Hello, baby. Whoops. So talk about the history of these animals. Come here. Okay, well, Sweet Pea deserves her name. <laughs> she is, she is the, such, such a sweet dog. Come here. Come here. Okay, so this is Sweet Pea. Yeah, this is Sweet Pea. She's been with us for about a month now, mm -hmm. I think, a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. She was very, very skinny. That's, and part of, part of fostering and part of our work um, with, the, with the animals is you know, getting them healthy again, because very often the animals we have mm -hmm. um, are like this, this little guy. Cupid just came to us a couple of days ago. A couple and of days? Yeah. And, Aww. you know, he has an injury because he was abused, and he's a, he's a skinny little guy at this point. Aww. But, um, you know, a month from now, you probably won't even recognize him. He'll be, he'll oh, be plump shaking. and... Yeah, he's a little bit. So where did you get these animals? So, Dandre, you know more about how the animals okay. came, right? Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about Sweet Pea. Where did Sweet okay, Pea come sweet from? Pea Hi, sweet Pea actually came from Belize City, I think, somewhere south side. Uh -huh. She was rescued. What happened is her... Okay. Her owner well, just left her there and her mom there to just waste away. She had incredibly bad mange. And she oh, was she had so mange? She had yeah. mange. And she had... And she's such a beautiful almost now. Almost all over her body, so she's completely unrecognizable. And she and her mom were left like that and left there starving. They were like skin and bones. Mm -hmm. Incredibly sad. Okay. So, yeah, come here. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know. Yeah, so in, it was very sad, and her mom didn't make it, sadly. Her, her mom? Her mom didn't make it, Aww. and her other litter mate didn't make it. She's the only one. So she had a really hard time coming around, just coming into herself, because mm -hmm. she lost everybody. Uh, but now she's she's really good before she couldn't walk she she was afraid to walk with people she was afraid of us but now she's like the most loving dog and the sweetest little girl ever now i'd imagine that's a part of fe the fear that people have you take a dog off the street you don't know what kind of diseases they have what kind of bugs <coughs> they have uh and whether or not they'll adjust in your home uh how difficult is it to make that first transition well, it could be really hard. I mean, I do it all the time. Sometimes with kittens, sometimes with dogs, like little Cupid here. Mm -hmm. it, it just takes under, like, patience and understanding that yeah. they've been abused, just like regular people sometimes are abused. It, they are scared of you. Yeah. They just need loving. Mm -hmm. You just pet them. You take them for walks. You talk to them and tell them, you know, it's going to be okay. And eventually they come around. Yeah. And we do. Before we... Um, give an animal to a foster or an adoptive home, we do have them checked out, like the local vets do the mm -hmm. initial yeah. assessment for us for free. Mm -hmm. And then if there's any further, if they need another test or if, yeah. they, you know, if they need a certain amount of um, you know, medical care, whether it's for mange or whatever, we do make sure Because mange is treatable. That's what yes. a lot of people don't know. When you see dogs yeah. on the street with no, no uh, fur, it yeah. can be treated. Yes. Yeah. And with mange, I mean, the earlier you get it, the, the easier better, it is to better. treat. If you, a dog that has really severe mange yeah. um, can be very, very sick indeed. Yeah. You know, but, uh, but Sweet Pea here is fully recovered from hers. Yeah, she's a beautiful she girl. Is a How beautiful old girl. is she? She's about eight months. Eight yeah. months old. And, uh, <laughs> she's, and she's now, she's looking for a home. So if anyone falls in love with our Sweet Pea, 
you should definitely get in touch with us. We have somebody, are you raising your hand to take sweet pea or you <laughs> want his attention? <laughs> Excellent. Are the bigger dogs harder to place than the smart? Sometimes, yeah. Puppies, puppies and kittens go like quickly. Everybody yeah. wants a puppy, everybody wants a kitten. Everybody feels that, oh, I need him to grow up with my kid. I need to treat, teach him tricks. And bigger dogs, old dogs can learn new tricks. Yeah, you can I mean, train in big dogs. They can be trained. Okay. They can be housebroken. It's not something because they're older now, it can't be done. And we have a couple of big dogs right oh, now. Oh, look, Cupid is warm. Oh, you still have all the scars on you. Yeah, he, yeah. somebody oh. kicked him in his face a few times. Oh, wow. So he, he's in your abuse in his short time. Can you see that? So she has all this area swollen. Is that how you found her? Somebody was beating her? No, somebody found him on the street and brought him in, but somebody obviously was beating that? him. Oh, you poor thing. Yeah. Yeah. So she's going into a foster family now. He, yeah, he, we, we, sorry. we actually are looking for a foster Cupid, of course. or foster or an adoptive family for, for Cupid. Right now I'm the one fostering him, but uh, I like How to keep... How many fosters do you have? I have two. <laughs> okay. You sh sometimes I'm the, one, I'm the only person who fosters cats, so sometimes I have like three little kittens running in my house. Oh, but you have Duchess's help. Have? Yes, yeah. but I have Duchess's help. That she has, Deandre has a... Um, a rescue cat named Duchess, okay. and she she's a really good mom to all the motherless kittens that we get. <laughs> now, some people can't. I mean, that's why I said it, it's a bit of a paradigm shift for people to consider the idea of moving from getting a brand new puppy or a bra uh, or a brand new kitten to going to rescue. But that's really what you want people to start to consider at this point, right? Definitely, definitely. Because, we, you know, we have such lovely animals. I mean, the sweet pea here is really does deserve her name. She's just, <laughs> she's a sweet, sweet dog. She's loving. She's um, getting better behaved every day, <laughs> you know. She loves um, people. And she, oh, yeah, she loves people. <laughs> Come on. Well, for sure. <laughs> I said and she's, She's better behaved. She's not maybe perfectly behaved. She's yet. showing off for the camera. That's I what think she's so. doing. I think so. I think she's look what I can do. It's time to perform. Yeah. And Cupid has warmed up. Now, guys, let's uh, let's drive the message home one more time. And I want you to be able to talk about how people can contact you as right. well. Um, if you do see an animal that is being abused, if you do see an animal that is being mistreated in any way, how do you con how do people contact you? Um, and what are some of the things that they can do? Okay, there's, there's really, there's two ways you can contact us. Um, uh -huh. One is to our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. You can send us a, a message on the Facebook page. And the other is by our phone number, which we just actually got a new number, so I have it written on me, so I know. It's 621-4284. Okay. Um, do people just need to remember that we are an all-volunteer organization? So we, there may be times when we can't answer the phone. There may be times when it might take a few hours for someone to get back to you. Yeah. But we do get back to everybody. Yeah. And we do the best we can. When it comes to the rescue work, um, we really do the best we can in terms of, of being able to go to an animal and checking them out. But we also really need the support of the community for that. Yeah. Because very often, you know, every, all our volunteers work, they have other commitments. Sometimes we don't have someone with a vehicle, for example, who can um, go and pick up an animal. Yeah. But we might be able to say, you know, if you can bring the animal to one of the vets that we work with, mm -hmm. and we can meet you there later, mm -hmm. then that's a that, that takes a huge pressure off us in okay. terms of how many calls we can respond to. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, that's, that's, I guess, the, the caution that we have for people, that we do our very, very best yeah. when it comes to responding to calls about injured or abused animals. But the more support we have from the community, yeah. the more we can do. And uh, you also take volunteers to be able to assist you? Absolutely. In doing what? Absolutely. Well, in caring for the animals is first, as either as fosters or um, or doing or going out and doing rescue if you have especially if you have a vehicle we could really use a few more volunteers that, yeah. with vehicles who can go out and look at an animal and see um, you know how they are and maybe take them into the vet or if you're just like a teenager who wants to help out you can I mean we always need someone to walk the dog someone to help us bathe the dogs um, we have sometimes our like that festival that's going to come up, we're going to need volunteers for that. Yeah. yeah. So that's some. That's a way you guys could help out too. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested in helping with the educational work, you know, maybe if you'd be interested in working on the the children's summer camp or mm -hmm. in um, in going out to speaking to groups, yeah. any of those things, we also need people for that kind of work as well. And the work of. 
doing the, the advocating for the changes in the laws that yeah. we were talking about earlier. So there's lots of different roles for volunteers to play. So almost any interest you have, we'll find a job for you. <laughs> and that uh, the contact information can also be used for the volunteer work. Absolutely. You pointed out that you also have uh, Sergeant Hamilton on your board as well. Yes. So from the K-9 unit. Inspector. Also, uh, Inspector, sorry. <laughs> uh, Hamilton, yes. Yes. But also from the K-9 unit and uh, uh, very much a dog lover as well. He so. is, for sure. And it's been a huge, huge... Um, benefit for us yeah uh, because he's backed us up a few cases when we have had to go out for <laughs> you're a little bit rude <laughs> Come um, on, when we've had to go out and um, you know look at an at a abused animal for example mm -hmm. um, it makes a huge difference in that we have his backing yeah um, and we just he's just whenever we need some help from him he's always been really really good to respond mm -hmm. so he's been a really excellent resource um, we've had some very good meetings recently with the city and we're going to be looking at ways because this unfortunately in the city there is poison still used yes. as an animal control mm -hmm. and um, you know I've met a couple of times with the mayor and he says he's interested in looking at ways to move away from that and we're actually going to be having a meeting um, in March okay. with the city and the central government public health people and us mm -hmm. to start looking at ways of moving away from poisoning so that's been another huge support to us um, and actually, I, I, <coughs> I want to mention one other big support because it's one I always forget, but it helps bring in some money for us is the, uh, the, the Fourth Street Tourism Village oh, yeah. um, gives us a booth okay. um, free of charge so that yeah. we can sell um, our items and it's, it's really our major source of, of income. income. So we have to kind of big up the Tourism Village because it's a really important thing to us and they've been really great over the years. Mm. Okay. Well, it's been great having you guys on set. And uh, I know that there's a lot more that is taking place with the Humane Society and a lot that you can teach us along the way. But of course, we got to cover at least just the work that you do, right? Uh, the volunteer work that you do. So remember, if you've ever seen an animal that you thought oh, uh, that you felt sorry for, that you wish would have a better life, you can do something. You can contact the Humane Society and get involved. Uh, you can foster the animal, which is a temporary, giving them a temporary right. home until you place a new home, or you can adopt if you can add to uh, what you have at home. Thank you so much for like being Sweet here. <laughs> yes, so Sweet Pea is up for adoption yes. at this point, and Cupid is going to be... He'll be probably ready to be in about a month, yeah. once we get him fattened up and yeah. get his uh, little Still injuries taken care of. Oh, look at that. There you go. How can you say no to those faces? That's right. <laughs> Oh, she's licking the injury. Well, thank you so much for being here. We have to go ahead and wrap up this segment. Uh, but remember, you can find Blee's Humane Society on Facebook. And that number, once again, is... 621-4284. Uh, All right. All right, great. So we're going to go ahead and take a break. And we'll be back in a few. So stay tuned.